Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week of a classic 1983 film, which was actually made in 1982, and it's directed by Martin Scorsese, the same man that gave us Mean Streets, Taxi Driver, and Raging Bull, All-Star, Robert De Niro, and one of the most misunderstood black comedies of all time called The King of Comedy. Um, the basic subject of this film is about what was it like if you worship a celebrity in one of the most American media culture of today or any other decade. I mean, about a would-be stand-up comedian who winds up having his big break in the entertainment business when he meets a uh, successful comedian and talk show host for the very first time in order to, for him to become you know, very famous and everything. It's sort of a Johnny Carson slash Murph Griffin type of host named Jerry Lanford. It stars Robert De Niro in one of his finest performances in the entire career with Jerry Lewis you know, who's been doing a lot of crazy comedies throughout the entire career of okay. his. This time he plays a different character. Yeah, of course, my favorite film of all time that he has been doing is uh, The Nutty Professor, which later became a remake by Eddie Murphy. Yeah, with Diane Abbott, Sandra Bohart, who I remember her mostly in the film Hudson Hawk, but he's been in a lot of stuff in the 80s and 90s as well. Shelley Hack, Tony Randall, Ed Hurley, Marco Winkler, Dr. Joyce Brothers, Victor Voyage. Also includes uh, cameo appearances by Martin Scorsese and The Clash. And it's directed once again by Martin Scorsese. The movie begins when a very strange but inspiring stand-up comedian named Rupert Pumpkin, who's played by Robert De Niro, who just came by to the studio, which apparently on a huge crowd of people, ton which are basically tons of fans and, and many others, where of course Jerry Lamford, who's played by Jerry Lewis, you know, came by inside his limo about to leave while he's already being you know, attacked and kissed by a girl named Maisha, who's, who Rupert's working with, um, who's played by Sandra Bullhart. But then, after that, he started to meet Jerry Lanford um, at, at lunch, uh, after going inside the limo, just to talk about what was he like. Um, and he's not like any other people that he had met. So that day, he, his attempt was to get his place on the show, so Maybe by then he might take over as the host after he's being tired and you know, he wanted to be able to take a break from all this. And basically he figured his whole life, he figured all of this time it would become his lifelong dream to become, as we speak, you know, the king of comedy. Because you know, he wanted to be able to do his uh, stand-up routine on his show. And yep, he even had a chance to do that when he wants up on the show for a while. Even with his girlfriend named Rita, who's played by Diane Abbott. So, things turn out okay for him until all of a sudden, you know, since he went inside his office, which is more like a, a 60s, 70s uh, type of futuristic, if I ever saw one. You know, and he was busy that day, you know, he... And he wants to make an appointment about about to see him until he wants to waiting uh, inside the, the building yeah, in, in a very awkward way. I mean, you saw that scene where he tries to uh, to just wait inside that room while some background music is playing. He said, I'll wait. <laughs> and that sort of way. Well... Apparently, you know, he was hoping everything was going to be okay for him until, until all of a sudden, you know, 
the uh, the staff, including a girl named named Kathy Long, who's played by Shelley Hack, had offered him to to do it, but unfortunately, he needed some work on his um, all of his comedy routines. You know, what, so once they gave him the tape and everything, so they figure they're not ready for him. Well, you know, Misha, of course, was going to give, planning on having Rupert to give him the, the notes. He, he told him that he just left and they won't offer him back. So once he tried to get in, he was being kicked out and everything. So since his plan didn't work, um, the very next day, he decided to go all the way to his place along with Rita. Um, suddenly, his uh, butler, yeah, they went inside a huge mansion that he has. Um, suddenly, the butler, um, as well as the maid, had been shocked that he was in there, telling them that he wasn't invited inside his place. But, but basically, he wanted to go in just to talk to Jerry about about his uh, material, about what was it going on, and how come he can't accept it or anything, or, you know, so to speak. But then. And you know, Jerry decided to have him leave, or he's going to call the cops. But yeah, so they had a huge fight, and then suddenly the whole plan didn't work at all. So after that, his biggest plan was to do a kidnapping scheme. Yeah, that's pretty much often in, in movies these days, where they had to use, where basically he disguises himself, you know, along with Maisha. Well, once we're going to her apartment, which is basically her parents' uh, Manhattan townhouse, and his plot was this: as ransom, um, Ruber demands that he'll be given an opening spot on the evening of the Jerry Lanford show, who later was host, guest host by Tony Randall, and it was going to be broadcast in a normal fashion. So the network bras, lawyers, and FBI had agreed about all of this that the understanding that Lanford will be released once the show airs. So between the taping and the broadcast, Maisha has her dream date with Lanford since she was very obsessed with him. Already being duct taped to a chair. Yeah, even with uh, you know, the duct tape on his mouth. Once they removed that, you know, you know, she was making a confession talking about about, you know, about how he, she remembers everything, you know, she likes to talk about all the stuff that she likes to do you know, as a result to, to this. So, once uh, Jerry had found out about the gun that they used on, on him, since it wasn't really a real gun, it was a fake toy gun that he took, and, and he actually winds up escaping by slapping her, you know, already dressed in her underwear and then she started chasing him around once he escapes until he went to the TV shop and he, he saw Rupert Pumpkin on TV you know doing his uh, stand-up routine so uh, once all of this had happened he got arrested for that and then finally two years after he got released he's becoming the talk of the town so everything from magazines newspapers to uh, the news in general he finally got his big break, yeah, especially after that uh, that one stand-up routine that he did. That not many people thought you know he was ready for. It. In fact, he's not funny. Actually, he was very funny. I mean, the studio audience actually laughed by um, mentioning all the stuff that he did, especially that one particular quote that's been very memorable. And the entire movie is, is this. He says, Tomorrow, you know that I wasn't kidding, and you all think I'm crazy. But I figured this way, it's better to be a king, king for the night than a schmuck for a lifetime. That's right. That's his own words. But he also written an autobiography of, of him called The King for a Night. So that's why everybody's going to remember him for all eternity. And I really did enjoy this movie a lot. It was hilarious, funny, very dark at times, but it was definitely worth it. Robert De Niro did a very good job playing the role as Rupert Pumpkin in a sort of very awkward way. 
And when he does all this stuff that he does, all these crazy stunts that he's been pulling off in order to get to see, you know, Jerry Lanford and be able to become very successful, becoming the king of comedy himself. Yeah. He did a lot of stuff just to get attention. You know, Jerry Lewis did an awesome job playing a successful comedian and talk show host who they tried his best to give him the job until things didn't seem to work out as planned. So, and he wanted to get rid of him too as a result of this. So he knew all this was was going to be an issue. Well, that's what happened. Everything that tries to become more successful turned out to be a dangerous situation. And it did. But it seemed like they, they work pretty well as it, as it goes. I like the scene where he actually was already being chased around the entire city. You know, where he was, uh, you know, where he was trying to get away from Misha. You know, since he was chasing him around. You know, that, that was a fun bit. It even happened at the end of the movie, too. You know, Sandra Borhart did a very funny job, you know, playing the role as Misha. And this is really something because nowadays I've seen her a lot in other films you know, after this movie. So it's really cool that she got to play a different role. That's crazy. That's what I expected. Um, everybody else was great. I even got to see uh, Martin Scorsese making a cameo appearance as a director and one of the other guys in the background of the crowd during the beginning of the movie. And you know that scene where where Misha was jumping on him and attacking him too, kissing him in, inside the limbo. You know, before uh, Hooper Pumpkin wants up going in. Who could have forget the scene where he wants up having his own home that's built in like the talk show set where he basically has cardboard cutouts of Jerry Lanford and Liza Minnelli while he's sitting on the seat, you know, doing all of his uh, routine jokes and everything while well, he started hearing his mother on the background yelling and screaming saying hey hey Robert it, it's two o'clock in the morning I'm trying to get some sleep and he says I know ma thank you and that's sort of way yeah especially when he was recording all of his material on a tape recorder and everything yeah, it's, he's been doing that a lot. A lot of very awkward scenes out there, and it, it worked pretty well for the film. Because you know he wanted to become famous. Yeah. yeah. And that so many others that went into it. Yeah, yeah and I know Jerry Lewis went to do a lot of stuff, you know, prior to his work that he's been doing, playing all these nerdy type guys. I'm trying to do his voice, but I can't seem to do it right now because I'm a little tired, but that's okay. <laughs> but he, he's been famous for that. Uh, he later went on to do the MDA telethon, and he's been doing it for years, though I think he retired from that. Yeah, basically it's a, a program where, where they save a lot of children's lives from being diagnosed with a muscular disease that was spreading. So they get the whole telephone, you know, to, to raise more money to save them. And they've been doing that for years, um, every September. But they always be remembered for that too. And all this other stuff that he does. It's a, but it's a fine movie. It's, um, it's very hilarious. Uh, very quirky, awkward at times. It, it gets to you. I, I mean, even if you know if you don't seem to understand it at times, but I think it it kind of brings the point on this because it pretty much hap it does happen in today's generation. Yep, you see a lot of celebrities sort of like that, and you see a lot of you know people out there getting their lifelong dreams until wants a meeting as their mentor so things will become you know as good as it can be but then but at times like this stalking them could be a very dangerous situation especially when you wind up doing a lot of kidnapping schemes and all this other 
crap you know that's happening to the celebrity that you meet. Yeah, because stalking is a very big issue these days in the today's media. Yeah, and they sure brought in the subject to this film. It, it was interesting. But uh, other than that, though, it's it's very worth watching. You would watch this movie anytime to see exactly what is it like. And it's great that you know Mars Corsese did a good job. You know, taking this uh, chance to make a film like this. Even though I didn't do so well at the box office when it came out. You know. But still, it, it would always be memorable. And now that it finally got released on Blu-ray for its 30th anniversary. Yeah, I haven't bought it yet, but I'll check it out. Yeah, I just um, I watched it online, so I was lucky enough to find a copy. And it was cool. So I wonder how good the Blu-ray looks. I bet it looks even better than ever. With all the extras and everything. So I'll definitely get a chance to buy that film on Blu-ray. Because I would love to see this film anytime. So yeah. So definitely check out King of Comedy um, at your local store no matter what. It, it's a fun movie. And I really enjoy it. So anyway, I give the King of Comedy a solid and hilariously fun movie even though it's very misunderstood five stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye